Hello YouTube Buds! I hope you're doing well today. I'm going to show you my charcoal drawing I'm working on, which is a ring-tailed lemur. It's almost done, but not quite, and I thought this would be a good stage to show it to you and some of the supplies I'm using, but most importantly, some charcoal tips and tricks. It's a good medium to start with. I mostly use colored pencil, but it's a really good medium to do to focus on values because you only have your lights and darks and your medium tones and grays. So let's take a look at the drawing. I've got some paper on top to protect it. And actually my ring-tailed lemur is done, but I did not finish the tree. You can use for your whites just the paper showing. This is a very light gray cans and me tens paper. I would have preferred a slightly darker one actually to start with, but it worked out fine. I wanted to leave a couple areas where there was paper showing, and I wanted a dense forest feel to it. The background is completely made up with just a loose inspiration looking at the reference photo, and then I just thought I really want a woodsy feel. Branches can be very weird if you take a photo of a tree you'll see there's very odd branches that will come out toward you then do a twisty loopy loop depending if you're looking from below and looking up especially they get all weird and twisty and i didn't want too much of that weirdness look once you put down the charcoal and you see you might say well i want it to be even lighter where the light is coming through here you just use your eraser and you just um you know, go like this and take up some of the material. So let's talk about this ring-tailed lemur a little bit. They are a form of primate and they're only found in Madagascar. They are not a great ape, they're not a monkey. They are their own family of primate called lemur. So I, I did not know that before I started this and I thought, well, that's pretty cool. These are Pixabay free photos. I changed a few things. I really liked the pose. I did not like the wall he was standing on, and I found a different picture. And you could see it's almost completely horizontal, so I put uh, just a bamboo branch under that he was holding onto. And even the paws would still be in the correct position for a more roundish shape, so that was great. This one has the bamboo look. I was going for a general look of the bamboo. I did not copy it exactly. The tail, I really love the position on this pose. The one rear leg, there's no space between the front leg and the rear leg, and then the other rear leg starts here. So you can see I just moved his leg back. I thought I would have one of these tree limbs going very close to him and then show behind him with the spacing. I really liked this pose but this lemur happened to be female. This is a different photo. Here's a different angle, and you can see how that would look. But to keep this pose and to have a better overall look within this pose, I thought male was a better choice. On a Mac, you can just find a adjust color function under tools for your picture, and you can make it black and white that way. And so changing it to black and white, you get a much better view of what it will look like if you successfully do it in charcoal. So when you do this type of drawing, you want to find where are my most prominent whites and shadows. And you can block those in first. White, white. Put them in with your white pencil. Um, this white does go over dark pretty well, so you can add white on top of it. But in your purest white, you want to put the white down first, and you do not want to put the black underneath it in the purest white area. It's nice to have some very obvious dark areas that you pick out and then become your prominent marking points of fur direction in areas of where you have light and dark. And then this being very dark is very important. You can get this pattern going by exaggerating those vertical dark lines a little bit and they're somewhat exaggerated in my view for the dramatic purposes of it so that they show up better and then this line was very important to show you get a real three-dimensional 
feel to the animal, which is lost a little bit here because there's such a repetition of black, white, black, white, and then the grays where they meet. That was tough to do, but just you have to give yourself time to be patient with it. And your direction of the pencil follows the direction of the fur you see, which will change. Especially you can see it here, and it whips around like that. You get the direction right and the length right, and you have a successful tail as a result. You can see that whip feel there. Fur direction this way, this way, this way. Most of it is up and down, but they start bending and curving at the end pretty quickly after the middle part. I think lemurs always kind of look surprised, but then I found some they don't look surprised as others. This one looks very surprised, and I enjoyed this pose for that reason as well. I want this to be rough looking, but to show some bark, but it'll be blurrier so that your mind will say this is definitely background. The leaves will be blurry because I don't want them to, I don't want any branches coming toward me and showing a bright, crisp um, leaf in detail for a few reasons. Um, I wanted the whole tree, all the leaves to be background, not a subject. And I have put leaves coming out before that could be as detailed as the lemur. An artist might pick, might choose differently and say, that'd be nice to have a clump coming out toward you and show one in this area, kind of balancing off this subject, but I just didn't want that. Tree shadows um, do weird things. Um, as you go up the tree, if you look at trees long enough, you will see that you will have areas of light coming through and then shadows of branches above are hitting the limbs below. So not that it's in that photo I showed you, I'm going off photorealism and creating my own tree shadows by saying to myself, George, um, a shadow here is very logical that there's branches above that are going to, the shadows of which are going to hit branches below. This is kind of a playful shadow where the branch above kept its shape somewhat and is going to flow into the shadow on the left side. I picked up the shadows on the paws from the original photo. Okay, so the light of the sun is definitely coming from on top. That is quite helpful, and there's nothing creating a shadow of his body here, so the light is not even so much behind as it's directly above and hitting the lemur this way from above, which means that's probably why this tree trunk is all darker. It's above and behind it somewhat, creating the silhouette look. I don't want a complete silhouette look. If I make this very dark on the left, and very light on the white on the right the way it is now this tree suggests the sun is way over here coming down this way and if that's the case the shadows instead of being here should be on the other side you see what i mean so to be consistent and have the light coming from the top which is kind of where i want it i want the idea that the light is bouncing around because of these clearings i created it's bouncing around, but generally coming from the top down. And so it might be lighter up here, especially as it's in a clearing area, maybe. But then more uniform here because it's no longer in a clearing. And it's not coming from the right, hitting the left. So if you're going to make things up, my suggestion is to think about the light and where it's coming from before you make your final decisions. And so that was an easy substitution I felt I could make. And then this is the black and white version. So I can get an idea if the colors all removed, what would it look like? And the tree is now finally done. Let's take a look. I mentioned before he was done, but now the tree is also done. I did go um, darker toward the bottom. I added a more defined uh, shadow here and darkened this 
center part here, leaving a little lighter on the edge. There's even a little bit of white there, the white charcoal. Some extra darkness there and then here, leaving it a bit lighter on the edge where the light will wrap around the tree. You can see that it's lighter on the top. That's the lightest part of this tree. It goes with my idea that I want the light coming from this area. I did leave off a lot of the idea of bark and the bark crevices. So to me, that's sufficient enough to have that kind of like a distance look. So I'm happy with that. I hope you enjoyed me going over those points with you. In terms of materials, I have some set aside here to peel off charcoal, but I use the sharpener in addition to that because it leaves a round nub. And then to get a finer sharpen and sharpening, you use the sandpaper. That's what these are for. If you need a finer edge, and I have needed that a number of times, this set was good. I have it in a package here, but there were three wood cased pencils and then the white charcoal. This is the white charcoal, which is compressed, very hard chalk. You need a kneady eraser. These were good. And then there's a variety of, there's three different levels of darknesses. The softer you go, the darker it is. They have medium, soft, and extra soft in this kit. Medium is the it's lighter of the three, but it's not its not very light, actually. But you can get a finer line with it. So it sharpens better on this than finish it with the sandpaper. The softest one, if you sharpen it too much, it'll begin to break more before you get a chance to sharpen it. The extra soft is very black, very dark. You could get by with just the one if you need it to start with. But I find with the technique I'm using, you need the white that you can't really skip that. Oh, and you need these too. You will actually draw with these and not just the pencil because if they get uh, smudgy on top with your blending, that's enough darkness often where you can start with that instead of a pencil. And uh, to get some of this, these, this area without the lines, you can use just these um, blending sticks. I also did get a fixative spray spectra fix if you haven't finished blending an area yet and then you sprayed the workable fixative it can be difficult to blend more what you already have down if you're really into a blending session i would say don't stop and then spray and stop and spray finish your blending session know that you're going to do more later with a different layer but you need the glassine paper to rest your hand on and it saves a lot of your work and not to get it smudgy as you're working. You want to put this on top of your art when you, you ship it or if you've rolled it up, you've got to have this on top of your artwork. I look forward to doing the next charcoal one. This one really was like a practice for my next complex architectural one, which I'll be doing in charcoal. So that's it for this one, and you take care, and I don't know when I'll get that next one up. It's going to be a while, but um, unless I put up a different one or a travel video, that's very possible, too. We will see. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. And his leg has a really nice different pattern with the upward movement of the fur going like that compared to the other fur moves. So that was nice to see that change.